Franconi, powerful, a bruiser. Yeah, powerful. loves yeah. to bring the aggression, bring the heat. Good wrestling. Yeah, heavy base. You see that right there off that shot. Heavy base, very difficult to sweep. Aggressive. That was a nicely timed guard pull from Kieran there. Half of the trick is being able to pull them without um, without giving up the uh, giving up the two, right? You see Kieran trying to dig, swim beneath the powerful base there of Rodrigo. No easy task though as Rodrigo bases out, puts his head squared in the chin of Kuchuk for a moment there. Really low base there, again, from Rodrigo. He does not want Kieran to go underneath his legs. As Kieran does swim, tries to get that underhook. It's a little shallow. Can't quite get it. Zegard got the knee shield. Frankie only know, uh, oh, briefly had the underhook there, but good use from uh, Kitschuk on bottom in using his hands to protect the upper body he's uh using that right hand on the bicep to deny rodrigo the the cross face and his left elbow is tight against his ribs that will oh there he goes high opens it up a little and you can see frankioni fails immediately at the the merest whiff of a submission threat back out and try again you know he uh didn't get too far with his passing earlier. Was sort of feeling out. I think Kieran's, Kieran's looks, his attempts. He knows that Kieran wants to go under, but has no problem as well throwing up a quick triangle. Kieran's car is a problem, make no mistake. And I think uh, Rodrigo's doing a nice job of playing safe, playing cautious as he finds a way to, to dismantle this. Nice underhook now from Franconi. Kieran framing out well. Yeah, and the Z-guard holding it quite nicely for Kieran. And for those who haven't felt a really great Z-guard, there is a strong amount of pressure on the passer's hip. A ton. It, it can feel very uncomfortable, actually, yeah. just to be in the guard. Which is why you'll see them actually back out away from it rather than drive forward into it, because uh, it's a formidable weapon. And as we said yesterday, I feel it's probably one of those positions that is most searched for. It's like, well, how, how to pass the Z-guard? <laughs> yeah. It does offer a, a number of options, especially in Nogi. And look at this. There's the, there's the important the cage that the the that Kitschuk is using from bottom. He's got the the right hand inside on the bicep, and he's using his left arm very close to uh, to create a frame using the 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 lever of the elbow, and that denied Francione that important cross face and underhook control from the upper body to initiate a guard pass and. It's really important that when you are playing this guard position, this Z-guard position, that you're not extending your elbows away from your body too much. Because there, look at this. Manages to free his leg and Francione resets to the outside. Advantage there for Francione. I think a little generous maybe, but in any case, does change the dynamic of the match. In this position, you do have a lot of options. You can actually, uh, you can attack for, you can go high for triangle or plata. Uh, if you're able to maybe get like a wizard on the, um, on the, it would be Francione's left arm. You can also use the Z-guard to spin underneath and go for the leg attacks. And I feel like Kitschuk is, is hoping that Francione is going to give him one or the other at this stage. But look at that base. The way that Francione is able to drop, drop his, his chest and his hips and almost sprawl out completely. Good luck sweeping somebody with that kind of base, right? Yeah, he's clearly prepared for what Kieran has brought to the table, but can't seem to get too far past Kieran's framing as well. Uh, it's a bit of a stalemate so far in this match. Right. He definitely prefers the long-range passing, you can tell, right? The Frankie only looking for that jumping knee slide pass there. Well, he's mixing it up, right? We saw him trying yeah. to pressure in as he is now. Uh, no makes no sense to keep doing the same thing that isn't working so I like that he's working for some longer range passing as well that yeah. is how he received the advantage there 
You have to wonder if maybe Kieran will start showing a little bit different looks here as the match enters the second half. Now we see him sort of trying to invert underneath. Almost manages to catch a leg to come up, but Francione's distance management is key here. The way that he's kind of coming in and out quickly. Let me get a little bloody nose here. Yeah, it's like I think it might be the lips inside the mouth, maybe a little kick or a, or something. But I'll just give Frank only a, a moment's attention from the medics, and then hopefully restart. Just past the halfway mark in this match. Okay, ready to restart. There is a, another lightweight match taking place over on the uh, mat 12, actually. And um, this division is, uh, well, all these divisions are quickly taking shape, but the winner of this match right here, Kieran Kitschuk versus Rodrigo Francione, I believe, will go on to face the winner of Lucas Emmanuel versus uh, Zachary uh, Lacates, which will be the match right after this one. Kieran shoots up real quick. I, I like that he he's sort of laying in wait right there. Doesn't really show his hand too much and then quickly explodes up with a, looking for a triangle, an arm bar. Hasn't seen a lot of success with it yet, but the, the thought is there, the intention's there, mixing things up, which I like. Frankie only very strong and very physical. I feel like Frankie only is moving backwards more than he's not in the last yeah. few minutes, right? This sort of yeah. changed where he's still entering in, but not making quite as much forward progress as we saw in the early stages of this match. No, he's insisting less. And Kitschuk's really try, trying to chase after him, but... Just the frames of Kitschuk are so good. I mean, you would think many would crumble under this constant pressure from Frankie Oni, but... He sort of enters in, wards off the pressure, and then resets. But I, I feel like he's not even um, he's not even hanging around to to deal with those openings. That, that when Kitschuk goes for a submission attack or goes for a leg or whatever, that's a, a great opportunity to start a guard pass, and Frankie only will will bail at the the moment that he sees that and then reset the position. So we're only seeing half executed techniques from both men here. By the way, uh, over on Mat 12 right now is uh, DeAndre Corbe going up against the number one seed Gianni Grippo in another quarterfinal match that's taking place over on Mat 12. So uh, get the split screen going as we see the rest of this match. Hopefully we'll be able to switch over to Mat 12 and catch it if that one's still going. I feel like, look at the way that now you see that the difference is that instead of trying to go forward and trying to catch that uh, unhook cross face, Frankioni, he's framing from top, and he's actually stopping Kitschuk from coming up, and it's uh, it's not going forward. He there now. You see him now and trying to get that crossface underhook, but he's framing from top more than he is. Where it was earlier, it was Kitschuk framing from bottom to stop the pressure. Now it's Kitschuk is almost exclusively trying to pull Frankioni into him, and Frankioni is framing so hard. First time he's better. seen Kitschuk get a, a decent elevation, and he's making the Coming most of it. Coming up onto the back here. They're going to go out of bounds. I feel that that's going to score Kitschuk an advantage as they come as he came out onto the back there. Yep, advantage for Kitschuk. It is even on the scoreboard now. Less than two minutes remaining in this match. Oh, no, that's a bad penalty for Kitschuk. Uh, I don't think that he gave him an opportunity to stand back up there. I mean, we, so we are seeing both the side referees taking back that penalty, so yeah. That would have really been unfortunate for Kachuk with such little time left, and he just tied the score, so all even yeah. now with one advantage apiece. Kachuk back where he wants to be, playing from the guard. Rodrigo, I think he needs to get busy at this stage. It's... Um, it's a tricky one to call, isn't it? If you're a uh, 
if you're a judge at this Chuck, stage. That's but another beautiful inversion there. You saw something wow. he liked in that last exchange. Just going after it again. Really like the agile guard work there of, of Kachuk. Nicely done. This is the beauty of that. Uh, this is the beauty of that Z guard. It gives you so many opportunities. Rodrigo's hips are a little higher than before. His commitment to the basing out is waning here as he knows he needs to try and earn this final advantage, which may give Kieran some more opportunities to invert underneath him with the hips a bit higher. Around about 30 seconds remaining in this match here now. As soon as this match is over, we're gonna jump over onto Matt 12 to uh, catch the other lightweight quarterfinal, but I am intrigued to see how this decision goes, Chase, because I, I want to know how the referees see this one. It's, um, it's good for us to kind of get a handle on what it is that they're looking for, whether they feel that Rodrigo's top game and control is worth more than Kitchuk's repeated submission attacks or submission entries from bottom, I should say. He hasn't actually had any submission attacks, but he was... Uh, he was definitely insistent on trying to draw Francione into some jujitsu exchanges. Well, let's see what the judges have to say. It's unanimous for Francione, the top guard, uh, the top position player. And I gotta say, I am a little surprised at that one, Chase. But that's that's just my opinion, anyway. That's the end of that match. We'll jump over straight away onto mat 12 now to catch the remainder of this, uh, this match. Gianni Grippo versus uh, DeAndre Corbe. Here we go. On